What's up, delectable demons? Today I tell you about troll rule number four and how to use it to your advantage. Alright, troll rule number four. I want all the nice things, regardless of if I'll ever use them. When contrast paints came out, I wanted to just buy them all. It was like Pokemon all over again. So um, I got some contrast paints, the original line, but they just wasn't good enough. So I decided I needed to get these instant colors from Scale 75. Um, and I bought them and never used them. Never really had a plan for using them. I, I think a better better system is looking up or having a color choice design and seeing if the color works for you and not the reverse. But anywho, I bought them and here I am. So today I figured I'd try them. We've got this, this dead flesh color and evil root. They were part of a skin instant color range. So thought, you know, maybe at some point I could use these or um, they might add some colors, but they really, I look at them and they don't make a whole lot of sense. So let's, let's try it out. First up, I'm going to add undertones. I start with this blue color for the skin. The intention is to add some unliving effect to this demon. Blue on skin typically sends a message that this is not alive. And to add to it, I use this flesh ink to start like the first stage of the Xenophil. Get that everywhere. And finish it with some white. Do this really quick. Get the face. Here he is with all the airbrushing done. And now I begin the oil wash stage. The beauty of oils is that they are very forgiving. As I slap magenta everywhere, his face, his knuckles, his perky little butt cheeks. This is in your face magenta. But as I add more tones through here, I did some black, some Payne's gray, some burnt umber. And this is a thicker wash, and I'm just slapping it everywhere. I really don't have much of an idea here. I'm just kind of going with the flow. I have the different paints ready to go in various thicknesses. I slap it all over the base. Pretty heavy-handed here, just get it everywhere. And then as I start to clean it, just start pulling all the pigment in different directions here. You can kind of blend different tones together. I can wipe away areas that are too heavy and just go for it. It's, you know, Q-tip or makeup sponge and just pull, pull the pigments around and all right. Noticed I need a little bit more, so I just throw more on there and just keep adding to it, taking away, adding to it, taking away. I don't really let this sit for very long. I just throw it on and figure I can wipe away or add to it as much as I need till I'm happy with the result. Definitely, definitely adds a lot of visual interest for very little effort. And so here it is. At this point, I, I threw a satin varnish on it just to just to seal it, but that's not required. This was the next day. 
I think there was still a little bit of wet oil to it and threw it down and I haven't noticed any issues. Now the part you've all been waiting for. Dead flesh on this guy. And of course I start with that perky little butt. This is why you're all here, to learn how to paint dead, demonic flesh on exposed butt cheeks. But uh, just pay attention, I'll show you how to do it. So now I throw this dead flesh all over. Don't mind that, that red sword getting in the way. You'll notice that it gets in the way a lot, but just bear with me. Continuing to add contrast paints to other areas of the model. They have his very extensive back hair. You know, it's what we all aspire to have as we age, you know, just full, thick back hair. And throw some black Templar on his head. Figure the kind of the vampire hair look going on here. And just hit the, the horns with a little bit of skeleton horde. Obviously I've sped all this up. I don't know how much people want to watch all the contrast everywhere, but now set all the tones, placed everything roughly where it looks good. We've got a variety of interesting tones throughout the skin. And now evil root. So the magenta was kind of knocked back here and I just wanted to add a little bit more reddish tones to to the face, the elbows, kind of where blood would be. Of course those perky little butt, butt cheeks. Just blend this in a little bit. And now he looks kind of ridiculous, but we'll fix this as we highlight. With any skin, I think it's ideal to go back and forth. And my favorite part of this whole model, if you just saw, was black lining the butt cheeks. Kind of make sure that there's a nice dark line in between the cheeks. Now I'm going to start highlighting up. We have this brown gray Ricarth flesh. Brown gray is kind of like a granite that seemed to match the color of skin that we kind of get to as a mid-tone. And then I figured just to add Ricarth flesh is kind of a, I don't know, like a cooler flesh tone. It's kind of designed for undead or dark Eldar, Drukhari flesh. So just start hitting that with a, this is almost pure uh, warm brown or dark brown, whatever it is. And to add a little bit of car flesh. Get some of the higher points here. Just trying to highlight where most of the light would catch, but you can see there's some of the blue undertone still showing, but I'm trying to keep as much of that interesting shadow colors just in the shadows or in the the lower portions of each of these areas just makes for an interesting unusual flesh tone so I'm not trying to wipe all that out just trying to hit the highlights here obviously sped up but you get an idea of using the or painting the upward facing areas this is a unique leg structure but I've gone all over, hit all the arms, all the, the other areas to get a look at how it looks kind of at the midpoint here. Now we're adding pallid witch flesh in there too. The flayed one flesh is kind of a mid-tone. I'm going to play with both these. The pallid witch flesh is a little too desaturated so Keep some of that yellowish tone in there and just highlighting up. Notice this is a back and forth process. So the evil root, you can kind of see 
in the, the recesses around here. After that first highlight, it wasn't wasn't nearly as stark. But just placing all these highlights in the right places. Because this is a custom sculpt that I did. Let's say this is anatomically correct in any stretch of the imagination, but it's very exaggerated features, so it's pretty easy to pick out and decide where to place all these highlights. This uh kind of deceased looking flesh here that's kind of stretched. Didn't really have an idea of set muscle muscle structures or anything like that, but just figured I would exaggerate some of these features. Now just getting those those eyebrows. There's a point here where I was debating adding hair to it. Like some makeshift hair, but decided against it. Kind of got over the top eyebrows as it is. And some final highlights to the butt cheeks. And we'll just slow this down so you can really appreciate this. This is the highlight of the model. I think we can all agree. So you gotta take take the time to appreciate the glute workout that this guy has done. And coming back in, highlighting the eyebrows again, adding a little bit more of that pallid witch flesh. Adding a little bit more than you think you should. Highlighting up a little bit more than you think you should. Getting all those lips again. Definitely want to push the highlights on the face a little bit higher. Almost was going for a semi-joker but not face painted type of look. Definitely wanted to have a pale face that kind of draw your eye to it so pushing those highlights up a little bit more than you think you should and at this point I think I'm realizing I maybe took away too much of that color so we'll come back in and add some more tones and then highlight it back up again and then this will be pretty much good but doing some striations some texture texture to his lips, his nose, not making it super smooth on purpose. Kind of a craggy, wrinkly type of look to him. This is not a, a healthy looking guy, so I'm gonna accentuate that rather than trying to make these ultra smooth blends. As if he's got perfect skin, this is not, this is not this guy's role. He's got some craggy lips, Never, never seen any chapstick. So he's just going to, we gotta make sure we're accentuating that. We're just going to keep some lines through all these highlights. Just get them again. Adding more and more highlight to this. Filling out some of these textures. We're almost pure palette witch flesh at this point. And like I said, we're gonna add some more color back into it. Into this evil root, dead flesh, and this fairy blood. I think the fairy blood is kind of what I was thinking the dead flesh was at first. It's kind of like this purpley color to it. Oh no, I'm kind of on a purple slash magenta kick these days. And just like adding that that very vibrant pop of color of that purple or, or magenta type of look and kind of go back and forth on both of those. But I'm much more selective here. This is 
a little bit more of the fairy blood. I think I mixed a little bit of the evil root in, so it's kind of a very thin magenta type of glaze in here, and I'm just pushing this into some of the recesses, starting my brush stroke on the highlight and ending it back up inside the creases. So if you watch, kind of force force the pigment up in there, but this is very subtle. Something that's hard for the camera to pick up, but definitely see that in in real time, and it adds more depth again back to the face. Definitely knocked out a lot more in the highlights than I wanted, but I wanted to add a little bit more realistic blood, maybe under the face, if that makes sense. Even though this guy doesn't have blood in the traditional sense. Let's try to add some more of those tones in. Especially around the, the mouth, the nose, the cheekbones. Just to add that back in. Being a little little free with the, the brush here. Just adding it in. Getting into that deep crest or that crease. sword. I'm sure that's why you're here to see an unpainted sword just block my brush strokes but and we're coming back to those same mixes just punching up those highlights again. So now I'm gonna be a little bit more selective. I don't want to knock them out but if I was a little too free I can just come back and punch back up the highlights. Just find those same lines, those same creases, and just lean back into them. Start to add some color contrast here. I'm following the same type of pattern, same type of brush strokes. Now when I first got this guy, I was thinking, I was torn on, do I do some like fiery eyes? Or do I do, you know, reptilian eyes or dragon eyes? And I decided I would start with, you know, some some fire eyes. I kind of get this, the Alzamon from the Will of Time effect. I'm like, hey, we'll just make his eyes look like they're on fire. And they're big, pretty easy to paint. So just want to give the impression of uh, a pupil or direction of the eyes here. Just adding a little bit of ice yellow to the chimera orange. The orange is very in your face punchy. So definitely draws the eye to it. Just keep adding ice, ice yellow. Here I am with blurry camera shot of just pure ice yellow. Just trying to dot the center of the eye where I See the eye looking. Give you an idea of the effect here. And I was a little too aggressive, but I can just come back in with a little bit of the orange and just tidy that up just a little bit. Mostly on the underside. There you have his eyes. Ooh, creepy. And the teeth, just a quick pass here. I think it's a warm brown from Monument Hobbies. Or Pro Krill, I guess is the, the actual name of the paint. And I just added in some Ushapti bone, trying to keep keep a very yellow, yellow teeth look. I don't think this guy's ever brushed his teeth. There you go, look at that sword again. I'm sure you all appreciate that. And just adding in more Ushapti bone. Trying to keep it to the, the points of the teeth now. Add in a little bit of ice yellow here in a second. You can see I messed up, so I gotta add some more warm brown back in. Highlight it again. 
no worries there mess up too aggressive just come back in nothing to worry about get this line a little bit better get that front edge yep add that ice yellow in magic color ice yellow just hit the very very point very tips of these teeth and here we go transitioning to the hair the thing about hair is finding the the halos it's almost like its own type of non-metallic it's got a sheen to it that kind of want to have a, an idea of where the eye or where your eyes are going to be looking at and follow a halo or like a ring how light would follow it so when you're looking straight on this guy it's going to come about to his hairline so you want to aggressively lay down some some gray color here and then just highlight in a ring around the top of your head here fight the tendency to put the highlight on top like you normally would it's kind of like a an, a different shine to hair so this kind of helps you feel more realistic if you can kind of have the bands of shine so here I do more towards the bottom and then the midpoint and at the front of his head it's not not quite at the top it's kind of kind of where you see it so you can see this undertone this undershine here kind of the band of it and it was a little too gray at this point so I come back in with some black Templar to add some black to it and the hair is done <laughs> 